And now, viewers, so for our first conversation, we're going to take you back to Friday, to Thursday night, actually. Thursday night into Friday morning, where we saw the wonderful displays of those inter-department uh, contenders on, on there. And first of all, one of those persons in particular is Mr. Personality himself, um, um, Mr. Dwayne White Jr., who's right next to me. But before we get into that conversation this morning, let's get into what was his performances and what got him the crown? Oh. Let me tell you, stranger, pussycat is danger, friend. Look outside. Come, kiss, kiss. I'm going to get mm -hmm. Take care, she right? Afraid, 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 pussy fight me. What is the real purpose for a pussy cat? No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the pussycat that does purr, glide. You know, the ones that like to have their own way. So that ladder all you're climbing, you better come down from there. You see, I was following a conversation about diversifying the economy. You know, the world saying we're running out of aisle money. So we strike gold when we start to invest in tourism. That just gives me more and more options. But then it hit me. What else we could do to raise with GDP? We need to adopt the ways of the world and sell pussy. Yes, I know. We market this England and Germany, so forth and so far, but don't forget we have to look at China because over there, simple becomes luxury, just like that. Hence, worm, crapo, dog, placenta, and now, kiat. But you see, in the Caribbean, they must skin up their face. Eating cat is a preposterous disgrace, but I bet you, all man Jack, go on to jump in the scene. In the haunting realm of the Devil's Carnival, a malevolent figure known as Abaddon takes center stage. Assuming the ominous guise of a Jab Molassi, a spectral entity cloaked in shades of yellow, black, and gold. These colors serve as a potent symbol within the devil's domain, each carrying a weighty significant that mirrors Abaddon's nefarious influence. emphasizes the enigmatic allure of Abaddon as a Jab Molassi, hinting at the devil's seductive nature and a vibrant malevolence. Black, the color of shadow and obscurity, embodies the foreboding presence of the Jab Molassi. It symbolizes the inescapable embrace of darkness, signifying the spectral nature of Abaddon as a malevolent force that prowls the darkness recesses of carnival, ready to ensnare those who succumb to temptation. As the dark counterpart of Abyssinia, Abaddon the Jab Molassi harnesses the evocative symbolism of yellow, black, and gold to weave a mesmerizing tapestry of deceit and temptation, beckoning mortals to become ensnared with the spectral dance of the devil's carnival. And that was the winning performances of Mr. Dwayne White Jr., the representative for the Division of Tourism, Culture, Antiquities and Transportation. So a special good morning and welcome to you. Of course, congratulations going out to you, Dwayne. How are you this morning? Thank you. I'm fine this morning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> See you doing the, yeah, the champion way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you know you had a few days, couple days for that for the for the wind to settle down on you. So how are you feeling now at this point in time? Well, I mean, I'm feeling pretty normal, you know, back back to normal. You know, after those two days of carnival, the Ash Wednesday is back to normal. That's yes. how it felt, you know. So a day of 
the winnings and you know, back to normal schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, a lot of people might know you because you're one of our cultural icons here in Tobago. I would say an icon oh, because you. you have been growing throughout yeah. the arts it's, uh, when it comes to acting, carnival arts, whatever it is. Yeah. You've been doing exceptionally well for quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. Now, what got you, what motivated you to put yourself forward for into the department? Well, I was asked, the question was asked if I can represent the division. I said, wait, boy, I don't know what else. <laughs> yeah, I said, well, I mean, you know me, I'm always friendly doing, saying, yeah, that's no problem. Uh, but I show you nobody else. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, I said, well, all right, I know seen. I represent the division. So um, it, the, the question was, was posed to me and I accepted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now when you went into, you know, the, the game room now and trying to figure out, okay, mm -hmm. what am I going to portray? Yeah. What are my performances going to look like? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what was that process like? Yeah, I was so, I don't know what, I mean, people will say we're doing this so talented and, you know, but I did not know what to do. <laughs> I, yeah, I did not know what to do with my talent. And I mean, that may sound a little, a little you know, shake, but I, doing, yes, doing my dream, I didn't know what to do for his talent. And I um, contacted my director, Rishon Peku, and, uh, you know, we sat on it and she came up with this, with this, with this question. What is the real purpose of a pussycat? <laughs> yeah, and I said, hmm. <laughs> she said, hmm. And then, yeah, we composed, um, came up with, well, brainstormed some ideas mm -hmm. um, about the topic, and she composed this brilliant double entendre monologue. Yeah. And how did how long did it take for you guys to put it together? Um I would say oof, approximately like a two to three days. Yeah? Mm hmm Yeah. Two to three days. Um the final I would say are two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me to settle in and yeah with the changes and everything like that. Yeah, two days, yeah. Certainly. And then, you know, of course, you're also a fire breather. Yes. Yeah. So it was almost only natural that you would pick a costume and it kind of sort of aligns with that. Yeah, strength. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, t t so tell me about what went into your costume as well. Um, well, certainly my hands. <laughs> yeah, so um, I um, helped when Marcus Devines and Afisha Moses Devines were the wirebenders and fabricators of this winning piece. Mm -hmm. And um, I went up at their mass camp and, you know, took a hand as what we will see. Um, and my mentor, he's also my mentor, Marcus Devines. So he told me, your costume is not yours unless I put your hand on it. Yeah. So I helped tape up whatever needed to be fixed. Not, not, the, not, not the major designs, but... You know, the little intricacies and um, what else it, it took? Just feeling it, feeling mm -hmm. how the weighty it is, you know, how you to maneuver, yeah? And yeah, I just go with the flow and performed. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we see you had a little bit of a competition with the wind on stage. <laughs> yes, yes, the, yes, you have to, uh, when, when practicing this art of fire breathing, you have to pay respect and attention to the element of oil or the wind. Yeah? Um, but, um, always go with it. Never go against it. And sometimes it was giving me a little dance. <laughs> left and right. At first it was dancing only left. <laughs> yeah, and then it gave me a little shake on the right. So um, it had a little challenges, but I maneuvered it well. Yeah. Now, and, and you, so you chose Abacina, which is one of the traditional um, Tobago mm -hmm. costumes and so yeah. on. And of course, the colors themselves that, that, yes. that went into it also have some meaning. Yes. So can you just tell us a little bit about those things? Well, from this costume, this, this portrayal was called Abaddon, Prince of Demons, Angel of the Abyss. Now, I came up with this character through my research of Abacina. Um, through more, I would say, interviews and uh, digital research. They have not, they don't have any much digital research about um, Hubert Cogwood Nichols, which is Abba Senior, aka Abba Senior. Mm -hmm. So I did 
some some live interviews um finding out about his 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 demeanor how he used to carry about himself while portraying him as and i say hmm as my ancestor because that that's my um family for my mother's side in nicholas oh yeah as my ancestor what can i do to to bring justice to his legacy and the only way i saw it fit is to i would say contemporize his tradition mm -hmm. to accommodate the youth in tobago to let them see what his mass was like in term, in in a more in a more brighter form so the black and the gold symbolizes symbolizes royalty and resistance at the same time mm -hmm. yeah? so was the black and the gold some of the colors that he used back in the day oh no he used black he just we used, used black. charcoal ah. <laughs> yeah to symbolize that that rebellious action resistance mm -hmm. and i just splice it in with a little contemporization with the gold to emphasize royalty yes certainly you know? yeah because i mean you were preparing yourself for the crown anyways yeah <laughs> 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 yes, yes. <laughs> so I mean, so, so you know, now now that you had that that portrayal out on stage, yes. did you get any? What were the reactions that you got from people? Um, what did they say to you after afterwards and so on? Wow, you know, like we who made that costume, me? I said the one and only. <laughs> yeah, my costume. Right? So um, they were they they were pretty shocked. Some were shocked. Some were, it, it was a spectacle, not just a fire, but just the bigness of the costume was a spectacle for that event. Mm -hmm. And I even, I even mentioned that it should be a contendant in Adam Smith Square, in Trinidad's yeah. traditional mass competition, because come on, man, the costume can't just be hung up in the office. You know, a costume had to be worn and portrayed. Listen, yeah. and it's like you, you see, I seen you there, and you just itching to take that out there. Yeah. The yeah. Now, um, you know the, what you said a little bit earlier about just yes, some of the history of Abyssinia and stuff, mm -hmm. and seeing as how that is something that is traditional to Tobago Mass, yeah. and. Are you planning at all, or are you looking, or is a TPAC, as you say in general? Because of mm. course you're you're under the TPAC umbrella. Yes. yes. But um, is this something that you guys are looking at at, at reviving in a in a big way to mm -hmm. get people in um just a bit more knowledgeable about some of our traditional mass? Yes. Well, I want to believe. Well, my hopes is that behind the administrative board that that is the plan. I I don't know exactly what is the plan as yet but um i want i would like to see I, I ideas may be constructing to to get this on the road mm -hmm. basically um i don't know exactly what is the plans but um for sure i'm sure that there's something in the pipelines in discussions of taking it forward Certainly. Yeah. And then when you were doing some of your research about it, about mm -hmm. Abyssinia and stuff, what was it like for them to prepare, to portray that in the past? Um, well, well um, what, I, what I was told is that he was, he was really fierce. Um, to port, for them to portray it in the past, what I was told, it was, again, it's rooted in ritual. So every child... I believe every traditional mass is rooted in ritual. The interviews I had about Abyssinia, um, his rituals were at home, preparation, rituals of preparation, um, where his family helped him, um, rituals of, of his presentation, you know, calling Mr. Swazil <laughs> in hell. I mean, Opukuari, um, the legendary, living legend of Fukurari yes. spoke about it in one of his articles long ago. Yeah, he used to call Mr. Swazel in hell, <laughs> you know, um, to find out who left hell from Krapobak village on Tanka Bean Train. Yeah, and um, I show some of the older folks listening to this will recollect, you know, that, that, that presentation. Mm -hmm. So that's part of his ritual. Um, the ritual stemming from then till now, it has changed a bit in terms of presentation, but the ritual in preparation still remains the same. In mm -hmm. terms of you are smearing your body from your feet, 
straight up to your head you are endowing yourself in character now i am a big advocate of endowing and becoming rather than portraying yeah so um in terms of giving us true essence of that of this traditional mass so the ritual remains the same from then till now but it it's it tweaks a little bit so and what attracted you to it the drambolasi oh um since that was talking back since 2007 yeah um when i used to work culture when culture was in gnv place um they did community development and culture it was yes. called <laughs> That's, and then um glenda roselin was my superior at the time and i was watching these mass these masquerades from trinidad because they used to hire a lot of masquerades um traditional mass from trinidad to push in tobago um and i used to say out of all of them i gravitated to the jambolasi so is a calling i believe it's a calling that gravitated me everyone have a mass calling mm -hmm. so my mass calling basically is the in the traditional realm jambolasi mass so something about it mm -hmm. yes and of course that fire breathing and we saw him on stage we saw him um as if we can get enough of him on stage for the department we saw him on stage quite a few times last yeah. night for um panorama yeah uh, being part of the theatrical performances of I mean, many of the bands from tobago and from trinidad um, yes 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 he does have to run i mean i don't mean that just i mean as a performer that you see that is a life mm -hmm. yeah that is a life it's a <laughs> All right, so, you know, as we're getting ready to wrap the interview this morning, you know, you're you're wearing the crown for the next year. Do you have any words to say? Well, um, I want to say thanks to the other contestants in the other divisions. Um, it was it was fun. And um, I wish I can be a part of this process again and not maybe not in the same entity, but helping someone. You know, to achieve this great, to, to achieve this feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all I want to say is when, you know, when doing your talent, just, you know, eat right, you know, for attainance um, and have fun, have fun on stage. Yeah. Um, have fun. Theater and theater is all about fun and truth, you know, living other people's truth and having the audience appreciate that kind of entertainment yeah so yeah. all right well i think that's a wonderful way to end this interview this morning on thank you so much Dwayne. and of course congratulations to you thank you and enjoy enjoy you wearing the crown for the next year thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right so all right viewers so that's it for this but don't worry we've got a whole lot more coming up for you on gmt so don't go anywhere